Welcome to Season 7 of High School Quiz Show Maine. We're whittling down from 16 schools to 8 as we work towards the quarterfinals and the championship with a $1,000 prize for the school's project graduation. In our fourth qualifying match, it's the Eagles of Wyndham High School. Taking on the Knights of Noble High School. That's coming up next on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. Home renovations can increase the value of your home. Safety Insurance offers a variety of home insurance products to cover your home's increased value. You can ask an independent agent about Safety Insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm your host, Todd Guttner. We're almost halfway through our first eight matches as we knock the 16 teams down to eight for the quarterfinals. One of today's teams will make it through and maybe all the way to the $1,000 prize for their school's project graduation. Wyndham is making their third appearance as they take on Noble from North Berwick in their fourth time on the show. Neither team has made it to the grand final before and both are hoping to change that this year. So let's get things going by meeting our players. For Wyndham, we have Mason, Caitlin, Will, and Chessie with alternate Nick and their coach by John Ziegler. And for Noble, we have James, Natasha, Alec, and Nicholas with alternate Felix and coached by David Parr. Now the competition has three rounds, the toss-up round, the category round, and the lightning round. We'll start things with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer. So, are you teams ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Here's the first question. Round one. Here we go. In which 2009 animated film does a character called Flint Lockwood invent a machine that makes food fall from the sky? Nicholas Noble. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. You got it. Which element with the atomic symbol P will cause objects to glow when they're exposed to ultraviolet light? Uh, James Noble. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is also right. Of the five great lakes of North America, which is the coldest, deepest, and largest by area? Go ahead, Mason. Superior. Lake Superior is correct. In September 2022, which musician visited the Library of Congress where she played a 19th century crystal flute that once belonged to President James Madison? Jesse Wyndham. Lizzo. Lizzo's right. Up next, we have a picture question, so take a look at the monitor over here. Question is, in this image, identify the ancient structure located in Athens, Greece that served as a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena. Mason Wyndham. The Parthenon. That is also right. The words, four legs good, two legs bad, are inscribed on the wall of the barn in what 1946 novella by George Orwell? Chessie Wyndham. Uh, Animal Farm. Animal Farm, yes. Te llamo in Spanish and je t'aime in French are most commonly translated to which three-word English phrase? Chessie? I love you. I love you is right. Next question, what flightless bird with a four-letter name that was native to the island of Mauritius was driven to extinction around the 1680s by humans who killed them and destroyed their habitat? Alec Noble. Dodo. Dodo birds, yes. In 2022, the Event Horizon Telescope produced a photographic image of Sagittarius A-star, which is what kind of massive object at the center of the Milky Way galaxy? Jesse? A black hole. Black hole is right. Next up is the video question, so again, look at the monitor. Hello. 
My name is Joshua Chard, and I am the 2024 Maine Teacher of the Year. And today's video question category is political science. What is the term for a form of government where power is vested in the hands of a few individuals or a single entity? Mason Wyndham. Oligarchy. That is right. Nice job. What city is, that is the capital of Kansas has an indigenous language name that means a good place to dig potatoes? Uh, Caitlin Wyndham. Topeka. Topeka, yes. On May 6, 2023, the United Kingdom celebrated the coronation of a new king. What is his name and regnal number? I think you were late, Will. I think you were late. Charles III is the answer. Was that what you were going to go with? Yes. Oh, no. That's a bummer. Welcome. All right. We move on, though. The 2022 U.S. Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade is known by what name? That is the name of the Mississippi Department of Health officer who was the official petitioner to have the case heard by the court. Uh, it was Dobbs. That was the last name, Dobbs. Which figure from Greek mythology fell in love with his own reflection in a pool of water? Was it Cadmus, Narcissus, or Zeus? Natasha? Narcissus. That's right. All right, we have a math question now. You've got a piece of paper and a pencil there. A driver completed three-fifths of her road trip after traveling 174 miles. How many more miles must she travel to reach the end of her trip? Uh, late, Chessie. Uh, it was a tough one. 116, 116 miles. Did you figure that out? No, I was just going to guess a random one. <laughs> okay, that was yeah, good. Well played, well played. Uh, we'll move on here. What Latin word that means person who recounts facts is also co a common English word that describes Nick Carraway in F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby. Caitlin? Narrator. Narrator, yes. Known as Pemetic to the Wabanaki people, what island is the largest off of the main coast and second largest on the eastern seaboard? Go ahead, Caitlin. Uh, Mount Desert Island. You got it again. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways is the most famous line in sonnets from the Portuguese by which 19th century English poet? Browning. Browning is the right answer. On a roll of two standard six-sided dice, how many combinations will yield the number seven? James Noble. Six. Six is right. Cartoonist Art Spiegelman won a special Pulitzer Prize in 1992 for what graphic novel that was based on his parents' experience in concentration camps during the Holocaust? Uh, Will, go ahead. Mouse. Mouse is right. Good job. In the human body, neurons are protected by a membrane or sheath of what fatty protein material? Go ahead, Mason. Myelin. That's right. To play Cat's Cradle, you need which of these things? A ball, a piece of wood, or string? Jesse? String. String. Nice job. What word that sounds like a piece of gym equipment is the common name for the sensory organs that look like whiskers around the mouth of a catfish? Barbell, barbells. Barbells is the right answer. What five-letter Spanish word that begins with S can mean a style of Latin American dance music or a tomato-based condiment? Alec? Salsa. Salsa is right. We have a second math question. Last one, too, by the way. The ratio of seniors to juniors in the high school ski club is 5 to 4. If there are 63 students in the ski club, how many are seniors? Jesse? Um, 35? 35 is right. Nice job. Great job. During World War I, German fighter pilot Manfred von Richthofen was given what nickname that referred to his aristocratic background and the unusual color of his airplane? Alec? The Red Baron. The Red Baron is right. Water molecules sticking together to form a drop is an example of what property in which molecules are attracted to and bond with other molecules of the same kind? Jesse? Adhesion. Uh, that's incorrect. Noble, you want to give it a shot? Uh, Nicholas? Cohesion. Cohesion is the correct answer. 
Uh, Bud and Lou are the first names of which comedy duo who are famous for the baseball themed routine, Who's on First? Will? The Three Stooges. Uh, incorrect. Dang. Noble? Want to just throw it out there? Or? All right, the answer is Abbott and Costello. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. There you go. What extinct volcano is the highest peak in the Caucasus Mountains of southwestern Russia? Answer is Mount Elbrus. If a caller is telling you to do an alamond left followed by a right and left grand, you are probably doing what type of American folk dancing that involves four couples? Uh, Chessie? Square dancing. Square dancing, yes. Named for the French city where it probably was commissioned, what 11th century work of embroidery consists of about 32 scenes depicting the Norman conquest of England? Chessie again. Um, the Bayo Tapestry. You nailed it again. It's spelled really weird. Yes, it is, and I can't pronounce it. I'm glad you did correctly. Because people listen to listen, because people listen closely to his opinions about the financial markets, what American business executive from Nebraska is known as the Oracle of Omaha? Uh, James Noble. Warren Buffett. Yes, Warren Buffett. Oh, that's the end of round one. We have a score. Wyndham 160, Noble 90. Great match is underway, so don't go anywhere. We'll meet the players when we get back. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... Hey, how are you doing today? The Maine Education Association does a fantastic job of giving us a voice. So what do you think? Good manners. To help teachers and students realize that people support them every day. The MEA helps me be better at my job. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Before we head to the category round, we like to pause and get to know our players with a slightly silly question, which is, if you could time travel but not be able to interact with anyone or anything, where would you go and why? And we'll begin with Wyndham and Mason. Uh, the 1950s, because it's, uh, people call me an old man, and I would like to find out why. <laughs> Do you think all old men come from the 1950s? <laughs> Mm, no. Close enough, though. Close enough. <laughs> um, Caitlin, you're up. I'd like to go to the Globe Theater for the first production of Romeo and Juliet oh. um, because it would be cool to see people <laughs> reacting to a story that's been told so many times for the first time. Yeah. And they were all, all the women were played by men. And I think that would be funny to see. <laughs> that would be amazing. Did you also happen to see your buddy here, Will, giving you the thumbs down on that? Uh, I'm blind to him at this point. <laughs> wow. 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 Will, you have a chance to redeem yourself here. All right. I think I'd go back at least five minutes, but honestly, probably more than that. Probably like <laughs> a few days. A few days. If you could go back a few days, what would you do differently? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Just go back and do it all over again. <laughs> um, Chessie, wrap up your, uh, your little story here with us. I'd go back like 13 billion years ago to the Big Bang just because oh. I want to study it, and it sounds super cool, and I just want to see like what it was like. I'd probably die. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, you wouldn't survive it to tell anybody, right? Yeah, but it'd still be cool to know. Absolutely, yes. Um, we'll go to Noble now. James, your turn. I'd go back to when JFK was assassinated, because I want to know if all the theories are true. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I just watched something, too, on, on Netflix, I think it was, on, on JFK. Yeah, fascinating stuff. I'd like yeah. to go back there, too. Natasha, your turn. I think I would go back to ancient Greece, because I've always found it fascinating. Ah, yes, ancient Greece. Yep. Or modern Greece. They're both or fascinating. <laughs> yep. Um, Alec? Uh, I would go back to the Constitutional Convention to see what was going on in the minds of the framers. Must have been insane, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just wild and how much forethought they had to figure that out. Um, Nicholas, wrap it up. I'd go see probably a performance by one of my like favorite musicians that's uh, no longer together, like the Beatles or Michael yeah. Jackson or something. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Good call there. Good call there, Nicholas. Okay, the category round is next, but let's see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Hi, I'm Paul Riley from Safety Insurance, and this is your viewer question of the week. In 2023, Cooper Wright of Cumberland Center once held the world record for the fastest assembly of a world map using what? Was it matchsticks, toothpicks, 
popsicle sticks, or Legos? We'll reveal the answer later in the show. Next up, we have the category round with the following choices. G-rated history. Chew on this. Simply the West. My secret identity. It came from Shakespeare. And Lucky 13. Questions have increasing point values and wrong answers will cost you. Each team will alternate control of the ca two categories. With each question, they can choose to answer and either gain or lose points. They can skip and neither gain nor lose points. Or once per category, they can toss and force the other team to answer the question. Players will have five seconds to confer with each other and decide what to do. Noble, you are up first because you're trailing by a little bit. Which category do you want? Uh, G-rated history. Please. Okay. G-rated history. These are uh, the answers to these history questions. Start with the letter G. Here's the first question. Four score and seven years ago are the first words of a speech given by Abraham Lincoln in 1863 at which Pennsylvania battlefield? Gettysburg. That's right. Gettysburg. Uh, G-rated history for 15. Which of the 13 original American colonies was established by James Oglethorpe in 1732? Georgia. Georgia, also right. G-rated history for 20. Which 1965 Supreme Court decision affirmed that states may not prevent married couples from using birth control? Do we want to pass or toss? Toss. Toss. Uh, you want to... Throw it We'd out like or you to want to send it over to Wyndham? Uh, send it to Wyndham. Send it to Wyndham. Okay. I'll read it again to you guys. Ready? Which 1965 Supreme Court decision affirmed that states may not prevent married couples from using birth control? No answers. Or Ricky or me there. Oh, it starts with a G, right? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, the answer is, unfortunately, you guys didn't get it. The answer is Griswold versus Connecticut. Griswold. Back to Noble for G-rated history for 25. What two-word name did President Lyndon Johnson give to his agenda to end poverty, reduce pollution, and improve education through programs such as Medicare and Head Start? Pass. Uh, you want, so you can't pass it back? Okay, so you're, yes. you're, no, skipping, yes. it. you're skipping it. The, the answer is great society. Great society. Uh, G-rated history for 30, a national organization that was founded in 1867 to represent the interests of farmers and support people in rural communities is commonly known by what six-letter G name? And the answer is Grange. Grange is the answer. Okay, we go over to Wyndham now for your first category. What's it going to be? We're going to go with my secret identity. Okay. My Secret Identity. These are questions about comic book heroes and villains. Will is excited. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Here's the first question for 10. The son of a lighthouse keeper in Maine, Arthur Curie, discovers he has the ability to breathe underwater, which helps him in his role as which superhero? Aquaman. Aquaman. Aquaman, Aquaman is right. My Secret Identity for 15. In the movies, Brie Larson plays Carol Danvers, a comic book character who is best known by which superhero alias? Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, yes. My secret identity for 20. Selina Kyle made her first appearance in the very first Batman comic. She's best known as which long-running nemesis of the caped crusader? Catwoman. Uh, that's correct. Here's the next question. My secret identity, 25. Created by author N.K. Jemisin. And introduced in 2019, the character called Sojourner Mullane is the latest incarnation of which superhero whose power comes from a magical power ring? Oh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern. Green Lantern. That is also correct. Next question, my secret identity for 30, the last one. An anti-hero from the Spider-Man universe, the character Juan Carlos Estrada Sanchez, is better known as the Luchador with what deadly name? Toss it? I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't think so. You don't want to? Like, I think we should pass. To, like. We're going to pass. You're going to pass it, okay. Mm -hmm. the, you don't want to send it over there? No. Okay. No. The answer is El Muerto. El Muerto. Mm -hmm. All right, that wraps up that category. We're on back to Noble. <laughs> Noble, did you guys know it? We did not <laughs> you know. You didn't know it. <laughs> All right, so what's your second category going to be, Noble? 
We should do what ke- uh, came from Shakespeare. We should do what came from Shakespeare. Yes. All right, it came from Shakespeare, please. Okay, it came from Shakespeare. These are questions about works with titles that come from Shakespeare quotes. Which dystopian novel by, by Aldous Huxley takes its title from a speech by Miranda in The Tempest? Pass. We'll skip. Skip. Yeah. All right, the answer is Brave New World. It came from Shakespeare for 15. Which 2012 novel by John Green about a terminally ill teen named Hazel takes its title from a line about destiny spoken by Cassius in Julius Caesar? Caesar. The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, that's correct. Here's our next question. It came from Shakespeare for 20. A 1997 nonfiction book by John Krakauer about a disastrous expedition to climb Mount Everest has what three-word title that comes from Act 4, Scene 1 of The Tempest? I don't know. Skip. You want to skip that? It's Into Thin Air. It came from Shakespeare, 25. The musical composition written by Edward Elgar that is traditionally played at graduation ceremonies is commonly known by what three-word title that comes from a speech in Act 3, Scene 3 of Othello? Oh, we did it. Skip. You, toss it or toss. you want to skip it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Y- yes. So you're going to skip. The answer is Pomp and Circumstance. Next one and the final one. It came from Shakespeare for 30. The first book in a young adult sci-fi series by Emily Suvada has what title that comes from Hamlet's soliloquy? Toss. You want to mm-hmm. toss over to Wyndham. Okay, I will reread the question for you, Wyndham. The first book in a young adult sci-fi series by Emily Suvada has what title that comes from Hamlet's soliloquy? What are the odds of the Court of Thor- Thorns and Roses? Try it. Go with it. A Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, That's incorrect. The answer is this mortal coil. Um, That wraps up. It came from Shakespeare. Back to Wyndham for your final category. Simply the West. Simply the West for 10. Questions about the Western United States. Here we go. A national historical park that encompasses sites in Oregon and Washington State is named for which two explorers who led an expedition to the Pacific Coast from 1804 to 1806? Lewis and Clark. That's right. Here's Simply the West for 15 now. The Bitterroot Range and the 1.6 million acre Bitterroot National Forest span part of the border between Montana and which state to its west? Idaho. Idaho, yeah, Idaho. It is Idaho. Idaho. Idaho is right. Simply the West for 20. Every 10 years, park rangers and citizen scientists at Sugororo National Park in Arizona take a census that records the population, health, and size of what kind of plants? A cactus. Cactus? Yeah. Cactus. Cactus is right. Simply the West, 25. Founded in the 1860s as a silver mining settlement, what ski resort town in Utah hosts the annual Sundance Film Festival and is home to the U.S. Ski and Snowboard National Training Facility? I don't know. I feel like it might be Ogden, but I don't want to risk it. We're going to skip. You're going to skip it? It's Park City, Park City, Utah. Simply the West, last one in the category. A pass in the Sierra Nevada near Truckee, California, is named for what party of pioneers who became stranded there in the winter of 1846? Donner. 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 Final. You nailed it. You nailed it. Donner, pass. That is the end of the category round, and we have a score of... Wyndham 255, Noble 130, but anything can change and happen in the lightning round, so sit tight. We'll be right back. How did you do with the question of the week? It was, in 2023, Cooper Wright of Cumberland Center once held the world record for the fastest assembly of a world map using what? Was it matchsticks, toothpicks, popsicle sticks, or Legos? The answer is Legos. Cooper assembled nearly 12,000 pieces in just over nine hours, beating the previous record by nearly two hours. Okay, we're heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay, the lightning round. Players, you do not have to wait for me to finish the question. You can buzz in at any time, but do not answer until I call your name. 
You get 20 points for each correct answer. An incorrect answer will cost you 20, and the other team will not get the chance to answer that question. The clock is set. Good luck. Here we go. First question, Nicholas Copernicus said that what object was at the center of our, uh, Caitlin? The sun. The sun, yes. According to the 17th century proverb, the early bird catches the, uh, Caitlin again? The worm. The worm is also right. The Forbidden City is a palace complex in which Asian capital? Alec, Noble. Beijing. Beijing. What positive number is the square root of 16? Jesse. Four. Four, yes. In the, US, in the U.S., Mother's Day falls on the second Sunday of which month? Uh, Caitlin? May. May, yes. All acids contain which chemical element? James. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Hydrogen is the right answer. In Disney's Pinocchio, what is the name of Geppetto's? Oh. Go ahead, Caitlin. It is Caitlin. Caitlin, you got to answer. Oh, no. Um, Pinocchio. <laughs> uh, incorrect. It's Figaro. Minnesota's Twin Cities are Minneapolis and which other city? St. Paul is the right answer. Olympic triathlon includes running, biking, and which other? Uh, go ahead, Caitlin. Swimming. Swimming, yes. What Swiss folk hero shot an apple off his son's head with a crossbow? James? Robin Hood. Incorrect. William Tell. Which desert covers more than half the land? Oh, and that's the end of the lightning round, and our winning team is Wyndham with 335 points, and they'll be moving on to the quarterfinals in a few weeks. Our runner-up team, Noble, with 110 points. You guys played great. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, be sure to tune in next time as John Bass Memorial takes on St. Dominic Academy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on High School Quiz Show, Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. People who can work from home seem to love it. Who else loves it? Cyber criminals. Cyber coverage from Safety Insurance covers data and system restoration, data recreation, and more. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. We'll help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you.